they're spoiled, they're lazy, they're entitled, they're living in their mother's houses, and they are doomed to disappoint history. Lazy and as selfish and addicted to technology. Lazy, entitled narcissists. There, This is a generation that's been spoon-fed self-esteem. So they, they never have to sink or swim. So We're talking about millennials, also known as Generation Wires. Things who are always texting and tweeting. They move from job to job and seem to be more laid back about life and seem to be very entitled. <laughs> and a little bit of entitlement going on. On. There may be a little bit of selfishness going on. There's not as strong of a worth e work ethic. Are we? It's very narcissistic and entitled. Millennials, you are entitled and lazy and just not fit to live. Millennials are already the largest and most diverse generation in American history. They now make up a staggering one-third of the nation's population and are poised to take control of the country in a matter of years. Young people are three times as likely as Americans over 30 to self-identify as politically independent. Yet, as more data about the rising generation emerges, many experts are expressing concerns about certain elements of the generation that could pose critical threats to the future of our country. Why is there so much negativity towards youth today? Is it warranted? Old people always talk about the good old days. But the good old days were not so good. When I was young, more kids were intolerant, racist, homophobic. There's no need for a battle between generations. Kids today are better, not worse. Cynicism about the younger generation is not at all a new phenomenon. What was called the generation gap then was very real. I really felt it myself, and my parents felt it, and they were saddened by it, and I was liberated by it. But what characteristics do define the millennial generation? Millennials are the children of baby boomers and members of Generation X. The range of birth years generally spans from the early 1980s to around the year 2000. The term itself was coined in the 1980s to refer to children then entering preschool who would be coming of age around the start of the new millennium. More recently, sociologists have begun to speak about Generation Z, which is the generation after millennials. Though there is some overlap. My pleasure to welcome you to the New School University. Uh William Strauss and Neil Howe have been credited with coining the term millennials. They predicted that over time the millennial generation will become more civic-minded like the GI generation. Millennials are known for their tolerance towards minorities, including their openness towards homosexuality. Millennials also happen to be the most well-educated generation in history, based on undergraduate and postgraduate degrees. Gen X, cliquish and judgmental, giving rise to brands like Abercrombie and Fitch, which sort of tell you there's four or five kids that know how to dress, they're going to build a secret clubhouse in the mall, and if you want to get past the front door, you can join. But millennials, on the other hand, are more inclusive and tolerant, diversity positive, electing Barack Obama, and actually giving wind to the wings of American Eagle, which is for everyone. While Generation X was characterized by cynicism towards corporations, millennials are becoming known for something called philanthropic entrepreneurship, which attempts to strategically use business to improve the world. When done well, these companies are often more efficient and innovative than nonprofits and grow faster thanks to their self-sufficiency and ability to make profits. Millennials have high expectations for innovation in the private sector. They have seen huge leaps forward in technology throughout their lives. Researcher David Burstein refers to the millennial approach to social change as pragmatic idealism. Millennials are also different than other generations in their relationships with their families and with their communities. High school-aged millennials are significantly more likely to say it's important to them to live close to their families. 
they're also more likely to have a close relationship with their parents. The average millennial spent more time with their parents growing up than previous generations. In fact, hours spent parenting have tripled since 1985 for fathers and increased for mothers as well, especially for college-educated parents. Some, however, argue that this coddling has raised a generation of narcissists. I just, I just don't want a job. I think I should always be given free money. Why? Like, why work for money? Like, why? Why not just have fun and games? It is true that millennials have high expectations of what they will be able to achieve. They have sometimes been called trophy children, referring to the high-pressure, achievement-driven, college-centric way they grew up. However, millennials are also known for being highly engaged in the workplace. They put great emphasis on their human capital or increasing their knowledge of a variety of skills and subjects, making them more useful to their employers. In the workplace, millennials also value creativity and the ability to do a job which is fulfilling and truly meaningful. Much has been made of millennia's increased obsession with financial achievement. Further research, however, now suggests that income expectations have not changed significantly for young men, and that the apparent shifts actually comes from an increase in ambition among women, bringing them more in line with the career goals that have been true of men for generations. Millennial views towards relationships can be complicated. Many were born around the peak years for divorce rates. What kind of sex do millennials think is okay and what kind is immoral? The casual sex. In hookup culture. Now, 12, 13, 14, overwhelmed by the internet, overwhelmed by the media, which glorifies it. And, and I think that it does reinforce the notion that all of the fear mongering that you see in the media over casual hookups in college is blown out of proportion. Mm -hmm. In fact, only 37% of millennials believe that sex between two adults who have no intention of establishing a relationship is morally acceptable. Right. For millennial youths. Right. So yeah, Youths, <laughs> as they say. Here are my, here are my thoughts. Um, so I think for the casual sex aspect, that comes as a surprise because you would think, like, wow, they should be, like, very accepting of that. While many millennials do have a more open-minded view of sex, they are also less likely to be having sex on a weekly basis than previous generations at the same age. And I think we often assume that a hookup is going to be this very exciting, wonderful, you know, freeing experience of sexual intimacy. The average age at which both male and female millennials lose their virginity is slightly higher than previous generations, and teenage girls are less likely to be sexually active than previous generations. In 1960, 77% of 20 to 34 year olds were married. As of 2013, that number has fallen to just 30%. Eight out of 10 high school seniors, however, say that they think they will marry someday, suggesting that young people today just choose to wait longer. Historically, college educated individuals, particularly college educated women, have been in the demographic least likely to marry. In the millennial generation, however, college graduates are more likely to marry. It's difficult to accurately make statements about an entire generation. In particular, generalizations about millennials have been criticized for being representative primarily of affluent white people growing up in suburbs, with minority groups and those from other socioeconomic situations exhibiting vastly different traits. Still, Many characteristics of millennials as a whole are very promising. They tend to be ambitious, loyal, open-minded, and optimistic. They glorify innovation and seek to use it as a means to make the world a better place. So maybe, when all is told, the state of our nation's future is not quite so bleak as some crotchety old geezers would have you believe.